green mambas versus black mambas. Toxic enough to kill you, so you would not want to take a bite from one of these front fixed fanged alapids. Look how close he's getting. Ooh, look how beautiful these snakes are. Ooh, she is so big. When I grab onto this black mamba, it's like grabbing onto a king cobra. She is a massive beast of a snake. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Right there at the top, flashing mouth. Look at that interior of the mouth. That is why they call them a black mamba. going on my beautiful wonderful people oh baby i got an episode for you today green mambas versus black mambas we're gonna be cleaning all the mambas today all four of them we got two green mambas and we have two black mambas you guys aren't familiar with these snakes these green mambas right here were actually sent to me by my good friend dingo dinkelman over in africa and uh wish him well wish him love because right now he's actually healing up from a nasty shoulder injury while jumping off a cliff in africa bungee jumping or whatever you call it he's just attached to a rope and he he's just decided to jump off a cliff so go wish him love go wish him luck with his recovery he's got a busted up shoulder we love him to death and he actually gifted me these beautiful eastern green mambas actually out of all the green mambas that you could get this type of eastern green mamba, this specific locality where they're found, are the most beautiful of the green mambas. And yes, the enclosure's open, but I know that both of the green mambas are sleeping right there in the corner, so I'm not too worried. So we're just going to slide this to the side. They have to get their enclosure cleaned up, so what we're going to do is just take them out, service the enclosure, show them off a little bit, and talk about green mambas versus black mambas. Let me just see. Oh, we got one scurrying out over here. Let me see if I can get this plant moved, because we have another mamba hiding right underneath this fake plant. Look at this little lady. She was actually deep in shed. She still hasn't shed her skin. She didn't eat her last meal. So I definitely, whoo, definitely wanna, whoo, whoo, whoo. Gotta make sure, whoo, she's all over the place. Definitely wanna make sure she eats this time. Oh, she hooked around a branch. That's the thing about these mamas. They're so quick. They attach themselves to branches. They, oh, see, just like that. They hook themselves in real good. And they're real wiry. You gotta be real, real wary where that head is because in a split second, they could tag you no problem. Look at that beautiful green mamba. Going to shed a little bit dull in coloration right now. So what I wanna do is get off the really pretty looking one. Let's get this one into a box real quick. Get them unraveled or her unraveled. This is my female. Look at that beautiful green mamba. Get her right into this box. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Get her right into that box, there we go. Close that up for a second. Let's get that other green mamba. This green mamba is thick, looking beautiful, eating every meal, and not currently going through shed. Woo, all over the place. Come on, nice and easy. Look at that. Ooh, beautiful green mamba. Actually looking a little bit dark too. This one's growing like crazy. Might be getting ready to go through shed as well. So these are beautiful green mambas that were gifted to me from Dingo Dinkelman over in Africa. Can't thank them enough. These snakes are just gorgeous. They literally get around seven feet long. And they're not as venomous as the black mamba, but they're just as potent when it comes to the Elapidae family members. They always have a very potent neurotoxin, no matter what mamba we're talking about. Not as deadly as the black mamba, but still toxic enough to kill you. So you would not want to take a bite from one of these front fixed fanged Elapids. Look how close he's getting. Gotta make sure I don't move too drastically and make him feel defensive and strike out. Look at, ooh, look at that. They are so quick, they're like lightning. Such a beautiful snake and notice there's a gorgeous looking yellow spot right about there. They have a few scales here and there that are yellow, so they are so pretty. Such a gorgeous looking Elapidae family member. Gotta be real careful, don't wanna take a bite to the chest. That'd be deadly. Look at that beautiful face. Gorgeous looking eyes, an amazing looking snake. Let's see if we can safely get this mamba into the box with the other mamba. The other mamba's just chilling right now. Woo, woo, woo. Gotta be careful because they like to climb. So he's going up my hook. Ooh. Let me close this box for a second. Get out this mamba's way. There we go. Perfect. It goes right into the box. Give a little tickle. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Come on. Snakes don't like to get tickled on the tail. Get some to rush off the hook a little bit faster. Go into the enclosure a little bit faster. Make sure everyone's clear. There we go. Nice and secure. Good to go. Green mambas versus black mambas. Green mambas, they can be a little bit more laid back. Dingo will even say it himself that the green mambas are nowhere near as defensive as a black mamba. And you guys are about to see Allison and Kobe do their thing. Both my black mambas on the other side of the room. 
They're always gaping their mouth, showing the interior of their mouth, that black interior, letting their predators know, don't mess with me, I'm deadly, dangerous, neurotoxic venom. I will inject you with it and you'll be dead within seconds. Literally, some people have died within 15 minutes of being bitten by a mamba. It really depends on where you get bit. If you get bit somewhere in the butt, big fleshy fatty area, the venom doesn't travel as fast. If you get bit in the wrists, intravenous, travels through your bloodstream faster, then you're gonna be quicker to die. You gotta be real careful when working with these venomous reptiles. Even a snake that's not known to kill people that fast, if you get bit in the right spot, you'll be dead within 30 minutes. So, that being said, let's get this nice and cleaned up. Make sure we get out all these little spicy meatballs compared to the other snakes. I don't service these enclosures like every other day like some of these other snakes. Because with the mambas, you wanna have as little interaction with them as possible. You don't wanna keep messing with them all the time, putting yourself at risk. Although we do make sure the enclosures, I make sure the enclosures are nice and clean. I also make sure I only interact with these mambas a couple times a week and not every day trying to risk risk the biscuit, if you know what I mean. Get that poop off there. I'm gonna spray that with some chlorhexidine, sanitize that. This is a blue spray called chlorhexidine. You dilute it with water. It's great for sanitizing poop and the surface of an enclosure. Got some sticks in here. I'm gonna move this around, try to find all the spiciest meatballs that they try to hide from me. They always try to hide it from me, but I'll find it right there. Yes. Voila. Perfect. Just gonna do a little spot clean. Looking good, looking marvelous. Let me get some fresh water for these guys, put all their plants back, and we'll put those green mambas back where they belong. My sweet little squiggly babies. Everything's looking good. We'll put that glass on last because you know it's got that insulation. It's a bit difficult to put on slide clothes, so we'll put that last. All right, so what we're gonna do is get these green mambas out, hopefully nice and smoothly. Get this opened up, there we go. Let's see how these guys are acting. Look at them, beautiful green mambas. You can see both of them cuddling each other right here, just hanging out. Green mambas are just so cool. And you can see the drastic difference in coloration. One's a much darker right now because she is going through shed. Let's see, nice and smooth. No dramatic movement. Let's get this tail over here. Let me just get this little lady's tail. Can I have your tail? Let me get that tail right there. Thank you for the tail. I appreciate it. There we go. Two beautiful green mambas. Ooh, look how beautiful these snakes are. I can't wait for the opportunity to go find one of these snakes in the wild one day. Hopefully with Dingo. Let's see, get these greenies back inside. Tickle, tickle, tickle. There we go. All right, let me get this glass on nice and safely. Better not break any glass. I've broken several sheets of glass for the windows. I have to get some of it replaced. There we go. Nice and easy. Get that locked up. Locked and secure. Green mambas, good to go. Now black mambas, let's see the big difference. All right, now we're dealing with Alice and the black mamba. Big, beautiful looking mamba. She is a beast about 10 feet long and probably one of the biggest black mambas I've seen in person. Now what I'm gonna do is take out my death adder. You can see, look at him, look at him right now. You see his tail wiggling? He's hungry, he wants food. Isn't that so cool? They use their tail as a lure and attract lizards or little rodents or whatever, and they strike. This is the fastest striking snake on the planet, and it's in the top 10 most venomous snakes on the planet. It's not a viper, it's actually in the same family as Mamba's Alapidae. So this snake has very powerful neurotoxic venom, probably one of the most powerful on the planet, more powerful than a black Mamba, it's crazy. So what I wanna do is take this death adder out of its enclosure, a little bit off topic with what we're dealing with, because we're dealing with Mamba's, Whoa! Bit the hook! Bit the hook! Look at this! Biting the hook! Holy smokes, dude! Be nice and easy. Don't bite inanimate objects. Come on. You're nice and gentle. All right, so we got the death adder. Ooh, let me get a better grip. Fastest striking snake on the planet. One of the most powerful venoms on the planet. The reason I'm taking this snake out is because I need its enclosure right now. So we're going to put this beautiful little death adder right here on the white paper towel. We're going to lock up this little enclosure, nice snake-proof tank. So what we're gonna do is utilize his enclosure. He did need to get his paper towels changed. So what I'm gonna do is take out the glass, just like that. And what I wanna do is just use this enclosure for Alice and the Black Mamba. 
nothing like the green mambas. The black mambas are way more defensive, not aggressive, not out to get you, but if you go after them, they get really defensive. Just like if someone came up to you in an alley and tried to put their hands on you, try to mug you, try to hurt you, put their hands on your neck, you're obviously going to defend yourself. And the snake doesn't have arms to fight back. The snake has a powerful neurotoxic venom and fangs to fight back. So they're always defensive, not aggressive. Maybe once in a while you might call the snake aggressive, but at the end of the day, they're just defending themselves. They're just defending their territory and their personal space. So what I'm going to do now is just get out this, see that there's poop, there's poop on the paper towel, there's urate. So I'm going to throw this all away. And we're gonna put Allison in here because it's easier to get her into a shift box versus trying to get her into a can. It's a lot easier to deal with the green mambas, getting them into like a box, closing it up, we're done with it. Allison's just a big, beautiful black mamba that just doesn't stop. If we try to put her inside a box or a can, she's gonna shoot out and nearly go past my ear and bite me in the face. So we're definitely gonna utilize a cage with a sliding door to make it a lot easier. So that just shows you already how much more cantankerous a black mamba is versus a green mamba. Let's throw this away and get ready to take out Allison. All right, beautiful people. We're gonna take one of the world's most venomous snakes, the Death Adder, beautiful specimen. We're gonna put him over here so he can watch. One of the most notorious snakes on the planet, the black mamba. What we're gonna do is get this enclosure down here. It's got new paper towel, so it's nice and clean. And we're gonna take out Allison and try to make a nice smooth transition. I'm gonna show her off a little bit to you guys so you can see the beautiful features of the black mamba, but we're not gonna push it with Allison because she's an intelligent snake. She knows we have a routine, and if I push it too much with our routine and go a little bit out of the routine, she gets upset. You know, this is not a mindless killing machine. This is an intelligent animal with feelings and it understands things. It understands when there's time to clean the enclosure. She's been in captivity for about a decade. So, you know, you're not gonna just uh, treat her like an object. She thinks if she sees something a little bit out of character or a little bit out of routine, she gets very upset. She gets cantankerous. When it comes to a black mamba, you don't wanna make them upset. So, there we go. There's more of her bodies right here and she'll be easier to get to. Ooh, she is so big. When I grab onto this black mamba, it's like grabbing onto a king cobra. She is a massive beast of a snake. Nice and easy, nice and easy, nice and easy. Look at her, probing right into my face. This is one of the most athletic snakes out there when it comes to handling. This is the most victorious snake when it comes to handling the black mamba. Look, she's already heading towards, you gonna go in? Look, she was trying. They're smart. She was heading right towards the, the hide area. Perfect, nice, smooth transition. She's smart, she understands what I'm trying to do right now, but we have to still be careful. In a split second, she could turn around and shoot out right into my face. So let's try and get her smoothly into that, into that container. Come on. Nice and easy, baby. Nice and easy, give her a little tickle. Look how massive she is. Huge, and it's crazy to think that her mamba is way bigger than her. Literally, come on, get that tail in there. Literally, there are black mambas that have been known to get upwards to 14 feet long, making them the second longest venomous snake on the planet. See, she's getting the rest of her tail in there. Look at her, she's focused right on me. She's playing no games. The black mamba is the second longest venomous snake on the planet. They can literally get 14 feet long. That is second longest, first being the king cobra. I am not reaching for that tail. She's looking right at me. Let's try and close the door a little bit. Give her a little tickle. Uh-oh, she's coming towards the opening. Try and get that last bit of tail in there. Woo! All right, oh, look at that. Not liking that. Let me get that locked. Secure, good to go. Can you see the big difference between a green mamba and a black mamba? Black mambas, the most notorious snake on the planet for handling, powerful neurotoxic venom, an athlete of the snake world, nothing to be messed with. Whew. Almost gets my heart rushing, but I'm kind of used to her by now. Anyways, let's see. Uh, lots of poop to clean, let's get into it. We've got some spiciness right here. Mama Mia, it's like Christmas all over again. I was throwing it into the water bowl. We're gonna clean that water anyways, throw all that poop right there. It's, oh, it's, it's like an Easter egg, huh? What's this over here? Oh yeah, hidden delights. Oh, it's fresh too. Very nice, all right, I'm gonna keep grabbing all this poop and I'll see you guys when it's time to put Allison back in the enclosure. All right, so we got a nice clean enclosure, fresh water, all the poop's been taken care of. We cleaned the glass, 
and now it's time to put Allison back. She's been hissing at me the whole time I've been cleaning. She is not in a good mood. She's got her head down right now and she's waiting for me to make my next move. So let's make sure that we go nice and smooth and try not to make her cross. Allison, dear, I want you to come out. I have something to show you. A nice, beautiful enclosure. Look at that beast of a black mamba. And she's more on the skinny side right now. Even though she doesn't look skinny, she can definitely be a lot thicker than this. Look at her, oh my goodness. Look how big she is. Ooh, woo. That is a mamba. Look at that. Let's put her right down. Let her go into her enclosure. Nice and easy. She knows exactly where she wants to go. What a beast of a snake. Let's get the rest of her body. Ooh, let's get the rest of her body in there. Nice and easy. Oh, holy smokes. Get that block where it needs to be. What a beast of a snake. Allison the black mamba. Ooh, she's really upset. She's actually flaring out her neck just a little bit. Don't look, she's gonna go hide now. Look at that. Look at this. Ten foot long black mamba. Most notorious snake on the planet. And it just wants to go hide. It just shows you they want nothing to do with us. All right, one last snake. Little Kobe. Little Kobe, the black mamba, my male black mamba. Another gift from Dingo Dinkleman. Love you, Dingo. I'm gonna take care of his water, do a little spot clean real quick. But before I do that, let me go get my little death adder back where he belongs, back into his enclosure. All right, we got little Kobe right here. He's staring me down right now. I am gonna be feeding him later today because I'm gonna film a feeding episode after this. And he probably knows it. Let me get that glass out. The reason I have to pull the glass out like this is because I have insulation for extra security for skinny younger snakes like this black mamba. So that's why I'm taking a little extra risk by taking the glass out like that with him right there. There is a reason to my craziness. I'm gonna put the glass down right there. And let's take out little Kobe. I've got my can right over here ready to go. He's much smaller, easier to deal with. So that's why I'm gonna be using the can. But look at him. Look how he's focusing right away. The green mambas, they scurry away. They, uh, they don't want anything to do with you. The black mamba is like that as well, but he's also sussing out the situation like a king cobra, the way he looks around, investigating, trying to see what's about to go down. He already understands he's about to get taken out. So I'm gonna gently get these sticks out. Oops, see him, he just flashed his mouth a little bit, showing me the interior of his mouth, that black mouth, which is why they cut the name black mamba. Ooh, he is a wiry little mamba. Let's see if we can get him without him getting up onto that lip right there, because that's going to be a problem. Let's see, he's slowly making his way towards the lip. He thinks he's going, but I got him right in that hook to my advantage. Let's see if I can get him out nice and smooth and get the stick out of the way real quick. All right, let's see. Come on. I almost got you. There we go. Look at that beautiful black mamba. He's getting big, too. Look how big he is. Holy smokes. Whoa, dude, you're all over the place. All right, I'm gonna put him right into the can. Hopefully, this is a smooth transition. Nothing like a King Cobra cannot handle him the same way. Watch that head. In a split second, this twitchy little mom will turn around and bite me. All right, gonna get him right there. Down by the tail. Ooh, just like that. Nice and secure. Definitely a lot different from the Green Mamba. I hope this episode helped you guys learn the big difference between the Green Mambas and the black mamas, but at the end of the day, they all deserve respect. I'm gonna change out this water, spot clean a little bit, and we'll put Kobe back in a split second. See you guys in a split. Ah! All right, beautiful people, we're done with the enclosure, nice and clean. Definitely wanna use the hook to open up this container, because like I said, look at this. Right there at the top, flashing mouth. Look at that interior of the mouth. That is why they call them a black mama, not because of the coloration of the scales, but because of the coloration of the inside of that mouth. They do not mess around. Do not upset a mamba. You will regret it. Look at this snake. He's becoming a little beast and he's gonna get a nice sized rat to eat later. Let's put him right back in the enclosure because we, we've had plenty of mamba fun today. Let's get this beautiful black mamba back inside. I'll see you later, Cody. I'm gonna get this glass. Keep my eye on him, making sure he doesn't come over here. Put this around. Try and do this nice and safely. There we go. Make sure it's nice and tight on both sides. Get that lock where it needs to be. Locked and secure. We're good to go. Whoa! Mambas. Black mambas, green mambas. And of course, there's multiple other species we'll cover one day. But just to show you guys the big difference between black mambas and green mambas. Green mambas, 
they're a bit more timid. They can still bite you, they can still put you in a coffin, but they want nothing to do with us. Black Mambas are the same way. They want nothing to do with us, but they're the most athletic snake out there with venom in their glands. They do not mess around. At the end of the day, the big message is Mambas, whether they're green, black, or even purple, you don't want to mess with Mambas. I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, check us out on Chandler'sWildlife.com. Buy your own merchandise, and you can help support the build out of this big, beautiful conservation facility. We want to see some big changes this year. Help us out. I really appreciate it, guys. All right, beautiful people. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, follow your dreams and stay passionate about what you guys love in life. I love deadly snakes and crocodiles. What do you guys love? I'll see you on the next one. You get bit somewhere in the butt, big fleshy fatty area, 